Well, in just a moment, uh, we're going to be finishing up our series uh, centered around our core beliefs as a church, but want to highlight a couple of things. Last night, we had the campus ministry over at our house and uh, had, a, had a great time. Really appreciate Delali and Katie doing a great job doing a welcome. Um, it was around 14, 14 students over, and so it was just encouraging to be able to hang out, have a devotional, play games, and uh, have a great time. But then also I want to highlight that this weekend coming up, we have something really special happening in the Jacks Church. Uh, Marty Solomon. Hold on. All right. He's, uh, he's coming into town, and uh, it's going to be a really great weekend, guys. Uh, he's, like I said, he, he heads up Bama Podcast, and he just recently wrote a book asking better questions of the Bible. Um, but it's going to be a, a, a great treat. He comes in Friday from, um, and from 7 to 9, and then on Saturday we start at, at 9, uh, going to 12, and then he's going to be preaching next Sunday as well. And, uh, and I advise everyone here to get here early so that you can have a spot because uh, we've invited some of our brothers and sister congregations. Um, I think her Daytona's probably coming in town. Some other churches of Christ and, and Christian, independent Christian churches in town may be coming here. So it's, it's a possibility, guys. This place is going to be jam-packed out. And so I, I really want to encourage you, encourage us to be able to come ready to give and learn and have a really good time. And uh, it's been a treat getting to, to know Marty a little bit through a lot of correspondence, and, and he did a video that he wanted to, to... Oh, let's go back. Y'all got volume? Let's try it again. Hey, Jack's Church. I am looking forward to spending time with you guys next weekend. I am at the beginning of my book tour. I'm already having a ton of fun. And uh, you guys are doing something special, doing a whole weekend event. I, it's been a while since I got, got a chance to really talk about the four pillars um, of Bema and my body of work. And it's always a fun time, and I'm looking forward to doing that. I don't think I've ever been to Jacksonville. I've been all over the state of Florida. Looking forward to being to Jacksonville. Looking forward to seeing so many of you. And uh, hopefully we'll have a great time. Until then, we'll talk to you later. And so uh, I recently just picked up his, his book, uh, Asking Better Questions of the Bible. And, uh, and you know, this, this church, I would like to say we're a mature church. Mature church meaning that we've been around. Most of everybody here have been in the faith for some, a period of time. And so I like some of the, the subheading of this. He says, a guide for the wounded, weary, and longing for more. And anyone that's been in the faith for any period of time can relate and connect to those words. It's, it's not just all fun and games. There's a, there's a sense of this is a marathon that we're in, and we want to last to the very end, you know, crossing that finish line, well done, good and faithful servant. So uh, I really believe that this is going to be a really, really great weekend for us as Jack's Church, and I want to really invite us to come in and uh, come ready to learn and, and uh, just have a really good time. So... With that, why don't we uh, go to God in a word of prayer, and uh, we'll continue our sermon series. Father, thank you for just this opportunity as a church to, to come together um, at the beginning of the week to have fellowship, to sing songs in your honor, uh, to be able to look at each, one, each other in the eyes, to give hugs, to have fellowship. Uh, God, we're a part of a beautiful, beautiful fellowship that was created due to your sacrifice, God. And I, I just pray that as we look at your word, as we continue to want to ground ourselves in the core beliefs that helped us uh, in our, our journey of understanding who you are. Um, God, just continue to help us grow in our faith. Help these things resonate in our hearts and our minds uh, so that we can live out in a special way. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So like we said, we've been talking about our core beliefs, what makes us tick. And uh, there have been five main topics that we've talked about. All right, the first one was lordship, all right? The second one was sin and repentance. The third was the cross. Uh, fourth was baptism. And then last week, Keith did one another, uh, our one another relationships. And for us as a body of believers, those five things uh, are principles and our beliefs that we hold to uh, just firmly. You know, when you think of lordship, we, we talked about lordship not just being about let me just follow God because he may destroy me. No, it was we want to follow Jesus, 
due to how he served us. He loved us first so that we love him. And so seeing how he lived his life and how, how he went about carrying himself on this earth, man, he is truly Lord. It's like we want to devote ourselves to him. We want to embody. We want to follow the true king and embody his teachings. And so that was the formation of the thought process, process of lordship. When we began to talk about sin and repentance, you know, sin are the, are the things that, that hinder us from our relationship with God. It's the thing that hinders our relationship with one another. You know, those things that, that we may not be aware of or we came to be aware of as we studied the scriptures were uh, enlightening and, and helping us be aware of, of, okay, what do I need to do? That's where repentance comes in. Repentance is metanoia. It's a change of mindset. It's like I was going in this direction, and now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and follow my Lord. And then we look at the cross. You know, the cross is central. The cross of looking at Jesus and and what he sacrificed for for us to to allow us to have a relationship with with him, but also giving us a relationship with one another. You know, also at the cross, we, we see our, ourselves that, that we too need to sacrifice. We too need to, to die to ourselves as well as sacrifice some things that we see that, that could hinder us from following Jesus. And then from there, we go to baptism. Baptism is the, the day where we decided to make Jesus Lord and we were buried and raised with him in, in the waters of baptism where our, our sins were forgiven and we proclaimed Jesus as Lord and we were filled with the Holy Spirit and we, we were ushered into this, this great fellowship where we're now walking with the Lord and the Holy Spirit is guiding us and we're part of this spiritual family that, that we're, it's exciting. And then the last part where, where Keith preached on last week was the one another, having the one another relationships that we all so desperately need. You know, it was so encouraging that, that, that I don't want to say test, but having Chad and Megan be up here and we being able to cheer them on. You know, we had a physical representation of what it means to be in one another relationships. It's, it's the cheering on, it's the help encouraging one another on to love and good deeds. Those these beliefs, these teachings are the things that gird us together. They are the, the guardrails for us to help us continue to be the fellowship that we are. And so I'm literally having to do a recap. Actually, that is the recap, so I think I'm about done, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. But to kind of try to continue to expound on this, you know, it's, it's always just so cool to be able to look at the scriptures and just like, man, you, you see all those aspects I just talked about being read, you know, and, and it's totally the Holy Spirit because we didn't even talk about what scripture was going to be read, but the scripture that Delali did for the welcome is the one that I'm starting with. It's, it's found in Acts chapter 2, and it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You know, this is a depiction of what went on right after those 3,000 people were baptized at the day of Pentecost. This, this fellowship started and this wave of, of encouragement and devotion to God and devotion and commitment to one another, it, it started. And they just continued to stay in, in, in Jerusalem for a, a period of time. And as we read this, this is the depiction. This, I'm not going to say this is the goal. But this is the snapshot of what we want to embody. This is the snapshot of what we're a part of. And so the question is, is that am I bringing my very best? Am I embodying the spirit that I'm seeing here and I'm bringing this to this fellowship? Or am I showing up expecting to see this and when I don't see it, I'm like, "Mm, mm, mm, mm." right? The 
question is, are we as a people embodying this or are we expecting everybody else to embody this so that we can be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're good. The thing is that living a Christian life, these are the things that we're striving to live out each and every day. You know, there's a, a passage of scripture that we're just going to really go through and I'm going to uh, pull out, draw out these different five teachings throughout the entire passages of scripture to, to see how repentance is, the lordship. Because this, we could do it here, but I want to use uh, Colossians, which is a, a phenomenal passage of scripture to help us see it. Colossians chapter 3, it starts off, says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Stop there for a second. When were we raised with Christ? When? At baptism. We were raised with Christ in baptism. So therefore, set your hearts on things above. When we set our things on things above, what does that mean? Jesus is Lord. The Lordship, the, the Lordship of our heart is captured with where the Lord resides. So this scripture is saying our hearts need to be set on things above where, where Christ is. And so when we think about where Christ is and how he lived his life, this is not just us sitting around singing kumbaya, waiting till the heaven. No, it's, it's about embodying it. It's about bringing heaven down here on this earth. It's about walking just like Christ walked here on this earth. And in order to do that, you have to set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. You know, coming into this fellowship, like I asked that question are we coming in expecting everybody else to embody this, or are we coming in embodying this? The only way we're going to embody this specifically, guys, all of us have got to set our hearts on the things above. That's where the lordship of Christ reigns in our hearts, and that's where it, it needs to be. It goes on to say, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Once again, set your minds on things above. It's the lordship, not on earthly things. Now, I always like to talk about the things on this earth are for here for our enjoyment. But where do we get tripped up at? When we begin to make those things our Lord... When we begin to make those things are the things we're chasing after in order to fulfill. No, these things are for our use to enjoy and, and, and have fun with. But then also, being a part of a fellowship and family like this, what should we do with the things that we have? Share. Let me share what I have. Let me share, share my home. Let me share my food. Let me share what I'm learning. We, we're able to give generously to one another. That's, that's what, what the Scriptures is talking about. And for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Once again, when did we die? Baptism. You think of the cross. Jesus dying on the cross for us. You know, this passage of scripture, it brings so much of the imagery of what our core beliefs are about. And as we continue on, he says, but put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Stop there for a second. How many of us can look at any of those things and say that the life before I became a Christian, and we may have fought or failed, these are the things that we actively pursued? Yeah. We actively pursue those things. But Paul is pointing out, you used to walk in these. It's like we used to, to pursue those things. But we died to those things. Those were the sins, the sins that we needed to repent of, the sins that we weren't aware of. We, we, it's kind of like some of us was totally blind to the things that were hindering our walk with God or hindering our relationship with other people. And when those things were pointed out and 
the Spirit of God convicted us to the core, and it was like, man, brother, what, what do I need to do? Repent. Stop doing that. Be baptized. It, it's, it's like, let's continue on. It's like you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. All right. He's saying that, that you rid yourself of some of those things, but even now you got to continue to pursue and rid yourself of some of these things. Anger. How, how, you don't have to say you struggle with it, but how many of us have, in our anger have sinned? Raise your hand. Okay, that's, I think that's 100% of us. <laughs> Rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. It's, he's saying that we, we've got to rid ourselves of these things. Not just these things that are, are obvious, but even these things that are in the heart that, that oftentimes people don't see. But they can come out in bursts of, of, of anger, punching a wall, or blowing up on your kids or your spouse, or, or even... Somebody that gets on in your nerves. As Christians, these are the things that we, we've got to continue to, to see and understand and have those things rooted out. Goes on to say, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self. Now you think about lying. You know, oftentimes you don't have to lie straightforward to people. But one thing that, that we can do with people is just, you know, I'm in a suit today. We're kind of buttoning ourselves up and kind of look good. I'm looking good, but there could be a lot of junk and stuff that's going on behind closed doors. So, so this right here is to help us understand the one another aspect. The one another relationships we're talking about is, is having de- deep relationships and friendships with each other that you don't have to lie to each other. You can be totally transparent and open about where you really are and what's really going on. You know, I, I, I am, I'm thankful for this fellowship because of that aspect. That in the different, I haven't been to a, a a lot of different churches where I lived for a long time, but I'm grateful that since being here, I've found some friends that I can be totally transparent and totally open with, and it's on a weekly basis. It's on a weekly basis, having lunch, having breakfast, having a coffee, and, and, and don't look at me as the pastor. Oh, you're getting with people. No, this is, this is a, a, a mutual relationship I'm talking about I have with brothers. This isn't me counseling everybody and telling everybody what to do. And No, nah, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about me being transparent and open about my life and what's going on. I'm thankful for that. And my prayer and my hope from, I know, the Davises as well, that's what we desire everyone in this fellowship to be able to have. To really be able to have that, that you can come and be met where you are and loved, accepted, encouraged, inspired, and, and built up. But you know what? It has to start with do not lie to each other. And I know that, and, and so I always, put, I don't want to say put a caveat out there. Trust has got to be built. All right? Trust has got to be built. I'm not just saying you go do that with any and everybody. Trust has got to be built. And when, but when it's built, that's when you're able to be able to move forward and not feel like you're having to live this life all by yourself. This, it, that's not what this fellowship is set up to be. And it says, so do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Once again, when did we take off our old self? When you were baptized and you were raised to that new life. And you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. You know, the powerful thing about 
baptism is that, yes, we were baptized that day and we were raised with, but there needs to always be a continual refreshing and renewing aspect going on in our lives, in our Christian life. And so whether you want to look at that as baptism or, or repentance, a continual p- repentance or anchor point where you're growing more and, and you've come to some greater knowledge and understanding, the thing that I always, when I ever think about my baptism, I think about the refreshing and the, re- the renewed feeling that I had coming out of that water. And it, it, began, it always inspires me to say that, that I want to continue to live my life in such a way that that is happening on a daily basis. It's happening in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sense that I, I'm growing, I'm being refreshed so that I can turn and refresh others. It's not, it doesn't just need to be just a, 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 a one-time thing, I would say. But as it goes on to say, here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is in all and is, and is in all. You know, culturally we are different. There are African Americans, there's Caucasians, there's Hispanics, there's Latinos, there's uh, Asians. We, there are many cultural differences that we have. And with that, there has to be sensitivity and awareness of, of, of listening and learning and growing and, and understanding each other's background. But then also understanding that the spiritual concept that the scriptures lays out It says, but Christ is in all and is in all. We're all one in Christ. We're all one body. And it's a beautiful thing to think of that. I like how the scriptures talks about that the hand can't tell the foot that I don't need you. You know, every part of the body is arranged in such a way that that is needed so that we can continue to grow. And so this picture that, that, that is continued to be painted is to help us see that, that we're the body of Christ. It, says, it goes on, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I mean, think, think of that. Me taking this jacket off and the scripture saying, Every day, what do we need to do? We need to clothe ourselves. We need to, need to put these things on. And at times, if, you, if you're really honest with ourselves, those things can be hard at times. Constantly being compassionate or kind. Humility, gentleness, patience. I mean, when we be real and honest, it's like these qualities, you know? <laughs> but once again, it's, it's the call of lordship, right? It's, it's, we're God's chosen people. He chose us. We know we can look at the scriptures and know that there are times Jesus was tired, and his disciples went searching for him, and they, when they found him, what he did, he stopped his time. And he went and he continued to serve those who are in need. It's being able to embody that. You know, these characteristics, they come from the Holy Spirit. They come from a, a dependence on the Holy Spirit. To clothe ourselves with, with these qualities It goes on to say, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. You know, this this passage of Scripture is explaining to us how to live in this community that we're a part of, this spiritual family that we're a part of. Because this letter was written to the church in Colossus. And and so we're able to extract aspects of it. It's not like it was written directly to the church in Jacksonville, but we're able to extract the things, the principles, and the concepts that we need to take on and embody. And learning how to bear with each other and forgive one another 
if anyone has a grievance against someone, it goes on to say, forgive as the Lord forgave you. You know, I always will always think of that depiction of Jesus hanging on the cross and he's saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. He did not say that for drama. Think about that. Jesus was not saying that as, as some dramatic type of statement that was going to be written down for every. No, that was his heart and his spirit of forgiving the very people that was literally physically killing him. And so it's in, with that concept that the scriptures lays out, and as his body of people, he's asking us to forgive as the Lord has forgave us. We know it's tough. We know it's hard. That's, that's why we're on this journey of sanctification, guys. We're justified when we're baptized and raised with, with the Lord in our faith. And as we walk these things out, we're being sanctified. We're being renewed day by day and learning how to continue to, to, to walk with the Lord and walk with one another. Then in the end, it says, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You know, everything that we've talked about over this period of time, talking about our core beliefs, they're not just something that stand, they, these are not standalone teachings, guys. They're all unified. They're, they're all collective. They're all, they all come together together to help us live a common faith. It come together for us to be unified, for there to be some continual concepts that we connect and we relate to. See, all of us can relate to what it means to repent, to be made aware of our sin. We can all relate and understand what the cross means to us. We take communion every Sunday as a a church, and we we take time out to reflect on who Jesus is, his death, burial, and resurrection, the the way that, that we solemnly are coming before God, asking for forgiveness, as well as the joy that, that we're grateful for. The aspect of the cross, all of us can relate and have some connectedness when we share about the cross with one another. There's a connectedness when we talk about our baptism. And then, like I said, there's a connectedness when it comes to us talking about our one another relationships. Brothers and sisters, these core beliefs that that we want to reiterate and be able to put out to us and just always affirm the elementary teachings, if you want to say, these things are to continue to help us grow in our faith. It's to help us not grow tired and weary when times get hard. It's to help us be able to to, to look at our brothers and sisters who went before us and be encouraged, to be able to look at this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and, and at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We're able to see that and believe and know that we're part of a church family that is striving to live this out. Collectively, not just on Sundays when we come here, but when we have our small group times, when when throughout the week, whether you're in your small group or the brothers are getting together or the sisters are getting together or you're having one-on-one times, these are the things that, that we want to live out and we want to proclaim and preach and not forget, because these are the things that continue to hold us firmly together. You know, as we transition to to communion, you know, 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 26 says, For I received from the Lord 
what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's meditate before we pray for, the, for our communion. Father in heaven, thank you for this moment we get to share as a spiritual family to partake in communion together. Father, something that we do at the start of every week uh, in remembrance of you, uh, but made even spe more special, God, to do it uh, as a congregation together. Father, to think of your, your broken body and your blood that was shed for uh, the forgiveness of our sins and uh, God allowing us to have this fellowship that we are part of. Father, may we continue to proclaim your goodness uh, to the world until you come back. And uh, thank you so much for this time. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the offering. Father, thank you so much for just this opportunity to be able to give back to you. Um, we're very blessed and uh, very thankful to be part uh, of this fellowship, God. Uh, may the monies that we give continue to do the work you have us to do here in Jacksonville. Thank you so much, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
How's this one? Okay. So I was just I was just talking to myself that whole time. <laughs> That's okay. Um, what did I say? Um, thank you, Damien, for a great message. Uh, definitely encourage you to not leave here today. That's right. Don't leave here today without having a conversation about these concepts. Um, even if it's just with your spouse on the way home or, you know, just at your small groups this week. Just make sure we, we're all on the same page here because it's really important and uh, it will help us to have the community that we really want to have as a church body. So before we um, continue on, we have some things to know before we go. Just a few announcements. First of, all, first of all, if you do want to connect with us as a church family and you want to be... Um, I guess, included in the newsletters, be invited to the small groups. There's many ways to do that, but probably one of the best ways is to fill out one of our Connect cards that you can find in the pew in front or behind you. When you fill out those Connect cards, just bring it to the back there to the Welcome Center, um, and they will know what to do with it there. Next thing I want to announce this morning is that we have our small group leaders meeting following service today in the Annex. Um, so please, if you are a small group leader, you want to be a small group leader, um, please make your way over there after service and we'll be able to, um, yeah, help better lead our, our small groups. Um, Damien already announced this, but again, this weekend, we do have Marty Solomon from the Bama podcast coming into town. A lot of us are really excited about that. Um, you know, what they're saying is that he's going to help us go deeper in our Bibles, learn to ask better questions. But I know the real reason he's coming is to be able to compete with Drew Perry's beard. Because there's no one else, there's no one else in the States, I think, that can really compete. My money's on Drew, though. Um, so please be there. If you can be there for all three, that's great. If you can just be there for one of them, a Friday night, Saturday morning, just, just come and support. Um, like Damien said, get here early because seating will be limited. Um, the next announcement I have for you all, really exciting, is our church movie night. I know we've been trying to do this for a long time, um, and the weather has not been great. Have we checked the forecast this, for this weekend? Okay, well... Um, it's not hurricane season, I don't think, but it is Florida, so uh, please please uh, come out March 4th at 7 p.m. Um, for the movie night. Um, next announcement, yeah, just hang in there. We're almost done, like halfway through the first page. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I do want to invite all of us. So, so, you know, Damien inspired me, you know, with the raising of hands. So if you could um, just raise your hand if you have kids. Here today. If you, if you have kids, okay. Okay, I got a few hands. Now raise your hand if you've ever been a kid. Okay, a few more hands. All right. Guys, if you rose your hand during either of those, you may be a great candidate to serve in our kids' quest. All right. I have some stats for you. I have some stats. Um, because we made a similar announcement last week. Um, unfortunately, we didn't quite get the turnout that we wanted. We need about 20 volunteers, 20 more volunteers. We only had one person volunteer last week, all right? So this really is a call to action, and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, okay? Before I leave here today, I'm going to sign up for Kids Quest. all right? Encourage you all to do the same. You know, we can't all be as well-dressed as Damien was today. But we can clothe ourselves with compassion and humility and serve our children and really invest in them. So uh, please, please do that as well. For those of you who are parents who have children in the Kids Quest and you're like, wow, they would let someone like Keenan serve in Kids Quest? There is an extensive background check that is, that is given before our volunteers. So many people may want to serve. Not everyone will be able to serve. Um, so, so our children are safe. Safety is, is obviously very important. So. Um, if you do want to serve again, uh, please, I think we can sign up in the Welcome Center. Is that right? Oh, okay, okay. And Christina will be back there. So uh, that's fantastic. Just a couple more. We do have our women's ministry that will, uh, well, I'll actually call up Sharon for that. So uh, do you want to use this mic or a second mic? This is a great mic. I'm going to let you use this one. All right. Good morning. I hardly even need a mic. But um, 
We just want to catch you up on what is going on on the exciting women's ministry this year and what's around the corner. So we had an amazing kickoff last month. I don't know if you were able to come. We had 60 women at our first devotional. It was outside at the Perry's. The, the view was amazing. God allowed the sun to shine until we left. Then it rained. And we had great food. It was incredible. It was a great first gathering. So here are some dates that you can make note of. They're in the newsletter, and we will be talking about them. But here is what is coming up next. You have to play close attention because you must sign up for this one. There's a, there being a sign up in the back. Nicole will have um, something back there today and for the next two weeks. So here's our very next uh, women's event. It are small group dinners. Friday, March 24th, Saturday, March 25th, you have your choice, and it's called Dinner with a Twist. Small groups around the cities, just for women, sorry guys. <laughs> Themes at each home, the host won't know who's coming to their home, and you probably will not know who's in your group. So once everyone signs up, we'll put the groups together, we'll tell you where you're going to be, and tell you what you need to bring. So, and you must be registered. You can bring your mom, you can bring your sister, you can bring your friend, and I hope that you will, but they need to be registered as well so we'll know who's coming and where they should go. This is for teens and campus as well. Sunday, March 12th, must RSVP by then. Sunday, March 12th. You can sign up in the back, and if somehow you miss that, just text me. Tell me you want to come. So why are we doing this? We're doing it so we can build our relationships, get to know one another, have fun, and bring our friends. And I hope that you all want to be a part. So any questions, just reach out to me. Can't wait to see you with Dinner with a Twist. And now we're going to bring up Phil and Sandy to make an announcement about... Oh, just Sandy. Oh, just Sandy, which is even better than having Phil up here. Um, if we're honest, I think Phil would agree, right, Phil? The better half. Oh, absolutely. I think I have the technology I too. Okay, I have to hold myself steady right now. So, <laughs> so um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sandy Smith, and I serve the church on the board of directors. And I'm going to talk about financials. Uh, but before I start on those numbers, I definitely wanted to introduce our new board members. Oh, I think I'm loud enough. <laughs> our new board members, and that is Renita Mayton, um, Carlos Rodriguez, and Dr. Chuck LeBeer. Um, we also wanted to give a warm thank you to Lyle, uh, Lyle Lear, if he's watching from Germany. And an especially, especially heartfelt, grateful thank you to Jason Dyer and Jeff Humphreys, who have been serving on the board over four years, and who have, who have truly been instrumental in, in, stabil in stabilizing our finances for the church. So really, a big round of applause. Okay, so let's talk about how we ended with 2022. So as far as income is concerned, um, the actual was 714,000. I'm just gonna kind of cut it short, right guys? Um, the budget was 537,000. So we were in a favorable up of 176,000. 76,000 of that is earmarked for special missions for last year. As far as expenses, um, our budget was 89,000 and we came right on budget at 89,000. So we ended the new year, uh, excuse me, the last year in good financial health. But with that being said, right, we have a lot of um, really great projects that are going to be coming on for 2023. Um, before I run into that, I did want to just mention, um, just I wanted to give a shout out to, just please make sure if you guys are really, um, would be great to do your online giving platform. Um, if there's any questions on what to do with it, how to do it with it, how to change your account, please um, come and see me. It's so important um, that we go ahead and give um, online. It's just a great, safe way to be able to contribute to the church. Okay. So 2023 highlights. Um, our budget for the week for our contributions is going to be 11000 
Um, we currently have a revenue of $54,000 that is generated from the gym, and I think that's amazing. Yeah. And like I said before, we have some exciting, very much needed church building renovations coming up. So a lot of our budget is going to be um, earmarked for that. And later on, um, we're going to go ahead and have a big meeting as far as what's going to be done, and Keith will be able to let us know about that. And for the first time in a long time, we have a campus ministry budget. Woo! We, we are so encouraged to see our young people, you know, just get together, especially in the campus ministry. It's such a, just a foundation for our church to see our young people come up. So um, that is it. Five minutes. I think I made it less than five minutes. So again, thank you, everyone. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and close out with a prayer, then we will be dismissed and have a great Sunday. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful. Thank you for just uh, the lessons we heard today. Father, thank you for all the hearts that served us. Father, as we just focus in on you, let's just continue to have the gratitude that you first showed us when we came to you, God. And Father, for all those that are entertaining or thinking about that relationship with you, Father, I just pray that you would just continue to touch them and let them know that there is nothing else like it. Father, that uh, a walk with you gives us the opportunity to continue to grow, and growth is the only opportunity that we have just to be continued, just to know that tomorrow will be better than today. And God, you make all of that possible. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>